Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Here, I'm in my showroom at The Bio Dude Houston. You can visit me Monday through Friday, eight to four. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Find me on Instagram and Facebook, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And today, in front of me, I have two awesome tanks. I'm sure you guys remember this terrarium here. This is my 24 by 18 by 18. That houses my breeding pair of carpet chameleons that I purchased from Frank Payne um, as babies um, about a year and a half ago. And they are, have been thriving in here, but I feel like it's time that they get an upgrade. So next to me, I have an Exoterra 24 by 18 by 36 um, that has the super grow drainage layer here. Uh, just because of the little excess moisture. So you see the super grow right down here that it gives me about this much of a drainage. And then I have my bio mix that is mainly composed of terra firma with a little bit of biodegradables mixed within that has been going and going and going for a long time to really jumpstart everything. I am gonna be taking some of the soil out of here and transporting over to here to help jumpstart. But this substrate down here, mainly com composed of my terra firma, you know, is really gonna have the bio be almost instantaneous. In here, as you can see, um, I kind of got started early just because this is, it would have been a really long video of you just watching me dump this. So here is a braided ficus tree. Um, as you can see, I have it going to the very bottom and there's enough of a root layer system here for the tree to thrive. Carpet chameleons live on the forest floor. So unlike a lot of other chameleons, they will thrive in glass enclosures as long as the airflow is adequate and the humidity spikes throughout the day are also adequate. It's very important to not only provide them a hot spot, but lots of places to climb. Since they're on the forest floor, I'm going to be creating a very intricate, small twig type of fallen log type of terrarium here to help simulate as much as the forest floor going into you know the under canopy throughout that entire section so that way we have lots of options for for hydration for thermoregulating and so on so i guess without further ado i guess let me show you my breeding pair uh, as of right now i have a couple eggs in the incubator which i'm really really excited for so here is mr male and he's been doing great you know, he's a little mad right now because he doesn't like being held. He's usually real fired up, like the really beautiful fired up that you guys so know that carpet chameleons get. But, you know, I've been poking and prodding and messing with them, you know, for a while. You can see how overgrown this terrarium is, and this is what you want to replicate for them. You want to have a really lush underbrush here, and then you want to give them options to be able to climb. All since they are thriving in this terrarium and there's a potential I might even find some eggs in here that I haven't found before, I feel like, um, you know, they are old enough now to be able to go into a much larger space and for me to feel comfortable enough that they're going to thrive in that large enough of a space. So I'm going to take him and I'm just going to put him right down here so he's, you know, in his little container. Here you go, dude. Okay. Now let me find my girl who's also gravid again. So... I don't relish the idea of moving her while she's gravid, but at the same time, I want to give her more soil to have, to have access to. And there's going to be about 10 inches of soil in here. And she is just absolutely beautiful. And you can see here how thick and bumpy she is. Yeah, she's probably full of, you know, 10 to 15 eggs, maybe more. The eggs are pretty tiny. Um, they're about half, about half the size of a jelly bean. Um, you know, and they can lay pretty large clutches. And that's why nutrition is extremely important as well as adequate lighting so right now you guys know i'm using a six percent arcadia fixture um, for the uvb as well as my grow and glow leds and a ceramic heat emitter for the hot spot and i'm going to be changing that up a little bit and i'm going to show you guys what i'm going to do so i'm just going to get this little one put down here and i'm going to push some stuff in here for them to climb on so that way they're not just like feeling stressed out and out of and out of the open so i'm just going to break a piece of the of the uh, arrowhead vine. I'm just gonna put this right here. There you go, guys. I'm sorry for messing with you. So I guess the first thing, uh, the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is before I even start messing and taking anything out of here, I wanna get the bones of their new terrarium set up first. And I'm sorry. Base thing with chameleons is they're very sensitive creatures. So it's really important that when you move them, 
um, or when you feed them that we're offering as much of a variety of a variety as possible these guys are fed super war uh, super worms mealworms dubias crickets um, small hornworms if I can get them in small enough um, as well as you know they're they're always fully dusted with the different multivitamins and stuff which I'll also go over with you so as you can see right here I have my nice solid layer um, of my super grow I have the tree and then I have my nice terra firma mix with some of the spag moss already mixed in so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want to put this larger plant here now I'm going to be adding these to the website probably in about two weeks. These are the large Sanservia snake plants. These are great for uh, day geckos. They're great for um, any, honestly, any type of uh, uh, neotropical lizard because the inside of the axles will hold water. A lot of lizards will lay their eggs in here because it protects the eggs from predators. Uh, that and as far as keeping is concerned, they're very, very easy to grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here because that's where I want it. So it doesn't look like much right now, but this is kind of the, the flow that I'm getting because the hot spot, I'm going to be catering it to right around this area here to give them that hot spot of around 95. So I'm going to take some of my already bioactive soil that is mainly terra firma. And what's really nice about the, this is, you know, when my female goes to lay eggs, I'm going to be able to see exactly where she went because the terra firma retains all tunnels and burrows that your, that your chameleons, lizards, snake, whatever makes in the biome. Um, so not only does that provide a good sense of security for them, a natural sense of security, it also helps your, your old world uh, chameleons, which are your egg laying chameleons, uh, to have access to burrow uh, and lay their eggs as they would in nature. For example, veiled chameleons, they can burrow three, four, five feet deep into the ground until that female is finally satisfied enough with the depth level of her eggs. Uh, and the same principle is with carpet chameleons. They'll go as far down as they feel it's necessary to make sure that their little ones are A, going to be able to get themselves out, and B, to make sure that there is, you know, enough of a humidity level and everything else to maintain the eggs being as sensitive as they are. So let's see here. Yeah, you can see I'm doing a deep, deep layer here. And if you and what's what's gonna be really neat is as this matures, since the bio shot is already in here, and I got everything set up, the the different funguses and the molds and stuff are gonna appear right here in the front. And it's gonna be really neat to see. Now, the reason I'm not doing a water level in the front this time is just because with how often my, you know, these guys seem to be breeding, you know, I want to give the female A the ability to get away from the male if she wants and, and, you know, and give her more than enough space to feel comfortable to lay her eggs. And that's honestly what's, what's the most important. So something that I am going to add here is a new product that I just added onto the website which is great, it's called paperback bark. It is great for your isopods and springtails. So it's gonna be really important that for your carpets that you have at least isopods in here because they like to eat a lot. And it's really great, especially if you know you have smaller ones that gives them the ability to eat the isopods as they, for, as they would please. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break up some of this bark. Let me get another piece. And I'm just going to mix it in with the substrate. And you guys saw that there was, there was already cork bark pieces mixed in. So now what's going to happen is as this bark slowly gets absorbed by water and other things like that, it's going to become a microbial hot spot uh, in the soil to help your plants get organic nutrition as well as your soil. So think of, uh, so th think of these things as just a longer lasting fuel source to maintain the integrity of your soil. As you can see, I do have uh, some my, my spag moss down here as well as leaf litter. Since these guys like to live on the forest floor, I am going to be giving them a little bit of le a little bit more leaf litter than typically you know I would use in the first place. So what I'm gonna do is I opened up my bag of spag moss. Now let me go ahead and dump some some agua. Agua. Okay. Shake it up. I'm gonna dump it. Okay. 
I'm then gonna take this bag of leaves and dump it. Now, I want you guys to, when you look at my biodegradables, think of them as the fuel that drives the car and think as the substrate is the car. So as the biodegradables are slowly used and consumed by the natural organic processes that the BioShot incorporates into your terrarium, as well as the springtails and isopods, uh, it will essentially provide macronutrients to your plants in organic forms, as well as uh, turn in the new substrate and allow you to continually rejuvenate your self-cleaning, self-maintaining ecosystem. Now, as you can see, I'm not really mixing a lot of spag in with the substrate. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to have it be so that way a little bit more humidity is going to be stuck around the top, but it's still going to be, you know, fairly draining well and, you know, do the trick. So then I'm going to just kind of give this a light watering here just because it is a tree, tree like a shrub and then the tree, a little bit of water. So I'm going to be watching this substrate very closely. Um, you always want to make sure with the firma that it's somewhat dry on the top and moist in the middle and bottom. But when you're dealing with an enclosure such as this, with a little bit of a drainage layer with the firma, um, you know, is one of those things like you want to make sure that your humidity levels for your chameleons are okay. So as you can see, I have four Miss King nozzles here. This Miss King is going to go off for 45 seconds twice a day. So this tank is going to get doused. And that's exactly what we want for these guys. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and I want to add in one of my uh, first pieces of wood here. Now this is manzanita. This is one of my new things that I added here. This, uh, this is har harvested ethically off of the Pacific coast and it's a very detailed piece. When I ship them to my customers, they're always shipped in their own box. That's why it has the free shipping built in because I cannot put these with anything else due to their sensitive nature. And that's just to protect your investment. You know, um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to give them a way to be able to reach. So I don't know if I want to put it this way or if I want to put it this way. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I have another piece of manzanita and I also have spider wood here. So I really like both of these items because A, they mimic almost a root base um, that you can make, or it also uh, mimics, you know, a bunch of twigs and sticks on the ground to create various levels of opportunities for your chameleons to climb on. And that's really what I'm going for. So before I go and add in more of this, yeah, I'm gonna work on adding in a couple more plants first. So I'm actually gonna go um, over here into the terrarium and you can see how how well everything's doing the photonia has taken over this arrowhead vine pretty much engulfed everything what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this arrowhead vine and i'm going to try and see if i can it's rooted all the way to the bottom well so this stuff will grow like this it's just going to take a lot of watering which I don't mind doing. Don't mind doing it all. Okay. All right. So you can see there's a lot in here. Holy cow. There's so many bugs and springtails all over the all over the place. Okay. So as you can see I got a lot of the arrowhead vines and I have it for good reason because it's very branchy. It's very very easy to grow. So what I'm going to do with this rooted end right here, put this as deep down as I can get it. I'm just gonna put this down right here. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing right here. So you gotta be careful though, when you're doing this because you wanna make sure that you don't try to outcompete the tree just because of the extensive root bases that that tree is going to need to be able to, you know, thrive and function. Uh, okay. I can deal. What do you think of that, Brandon? 
So, what, so I'm waiting for my small bromeliad cuttings to come in, but what I'm gonna do is when they come in, there's gonna be really small bromeliads scattered throughout this entire thing to offer them more water options. But in the meantime, I do have this brom here. This is a mother plant with exactly two pups attached to it. And I'm, well, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this out. You can see it's already rooted, so I'm comfortable enough with how well drained my soil is to go ahead and get us established. And I'm gonna put this right here in the front. Let's see. Okay. Now, I like that. I like that a lot, but so we got a nice filler here and here and here and as this tank progresses and grows it's really gonna um it's gonna change for the better but something that i really wanted to put in here is this so this is actually one of the ex tiki waterfalls that exoterra makes but the base came in broken so i've had this sitting in my warehouse for a while and i didn't know what to do with it and then i said i'll use it for the carpets because if they climb up in here they can get right out the back there's no way of them getting trapped the only thing that might bother me is when crickets get in here, um, but you know we usually watch everything really closely anyway. So that I'm gonna put right like this. I like that a lot. And then we have the water dish, which is obviously really important. So this is the Exoterra Large. And I'm gonna put the water dish right here. Now in this water dish, I am also going to be putting in small pieces of cork bark. So I sell the three quart size. And the reason I'm going to be doing that is A, that if the water level is, you know, slightly too deep, which sometimes that can happen. Um, if the feeders get stuck in there, they can get out. And of course your chameleons, um, you know, it gives them the ability to get out. It's really important to make sure that, you know, that you keep their water bowl nice and clean and healthy. Uh, over the course just for their overall well-being and everything like that. All right, let's see if there's anything else I can pull out of here. Yeah, nice. So I'm going to take this. I'm also going to put this right in the back. So right now to me, this looks like chaos and I'm fine with it because what's going to happen is all this, all these plants down here they're slowly going to take over this entire base. Like it's good. This is going to be covered down here with all of this. And the sand survey is going to grow up around the, the, uh, yeah, manzanita, as well as the ficus tree is going to retain its size through routine pruning, similar how you would maintain a bonsai tree. But the most important thing is we have multiple levels to be able to get to different levels and areas of the terrarium without too much of a hassle. So I'm gonna take, we have some live moss and I think I'm gonna put some moss in here. And I'm gonna put the moss right here around Mr. Tiki and the bromeliads, so. But I, but I, I gotta tell you guys, you know, I, I've, I've been in the reptiles a really long time and Exoterra really knows how to make some really neat niche stuff. Um, you know, while sometimes some of their stuff may not be the ultimate best, um, but when you look at all the big guys out there that are in the United States, you know, they are the better, in my opinion. Yeah, I like that. What do you think? I like it. Okay, so the only other thing that I'm going to consider, and I'm going to see if it flows, is I got a piece of ghost wood. I like it. It just needs one thing. So this needs to be like that. So it's resting nicely on top of the waterfall. I want this to come forward. There we go. I dig it. I like that a lot. So I'm going to put some water in here. So as you can see here, um, in my facility, I have to use very special types of water because Texas does not have the best water. So I get my water delivered in bulk from sparklets. But if you don't have that option like me, you can also use Reptisafe. For all chameleons, there's a couple different avenues that you can go as far as keeping the humidity up. So carpets can be, can be kept in a screen cage, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's gonna be a significant amount of work. 
uh, to maintain that humidity. But when you're dealing with like a veiled chameleon, panther chameleon, Jackson's chameleon, they're going to thrive in a screen cage. It's going to be more work for you because of the limited airflow in a screen cage, or excuse me, in a glass cage. To help with the humidity, uh, you can purchase a hand pump mister just like this. I sell these on my website. You can also purchase what I highly recommend getting is a Miss King. Some, some members of the community really like to use the Reptifoggers, which are great. They just require a little bit more work as far as maintenance is concerned. And as far as the heating goes, I'm using um, the Reptile Dome, and I'm going to start off with a 40-watt daytime bulb. Now, the daytime bulb is going to be on during the day, as will the LED and the 6% Arcadia UVB. So I'm actually out of stock right now, but this is the one size I had in stock and I just wanted to show it to you. This is what I'd recommend for the carpets and I'm going to be changing this out every eight months. Um, and it's going to sit right on top here. So 12 hours, the LED, the daytime heat and the LED are all going to be turned on at nighttime. We're going to turn it off and uh, that's going to uh, simulate their night and day cycles. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this tank a really good misting briefly go over the supplements and then get these guys put in here and let's see what they think. So again, this tank is a little bit more bare right now and I'm fine with it. You know, it's not gonna be near as dense. There's gonna be an acclimation period for both of them to be able to fully accept it. But I have a feeling that this section in here with the trees, as well as this section back here and back here are gonna be hot spots for them because they're the densest and they have the most areas to climb. The most important is making sure that they have enough areas to be able to thermoregulate um, and make sure they have access to the necessary heat and UVB that they need. I'm gonna be feeding them every single day uh, with feeding them very, very small soft-bodied roaches, very small hornworms, waxworms, as well as crickets, dust um, gut-loaded with my bug grub that has all the carotenoids in it that they need and for the for my indoor chameleons I highly recommend mine or all this is one of the best chameleon specific uh, excuse me best spe chameleon specific supplements out there as far as I'm concerned for indoor chameleons that are given um, reproduced UVB um, and then as well as you know you have your repcal calcium pink label um, and then if you don't want to get the minor all you can also go with the blue herptivite because it does have the beta, the beta carotene in it so they can synthesize the vitamin A, which is, again, I say how important vitamin A is for chameleons that drives their, home, that drives their basic element of homeostasis. So with this tank, my overall maintenance is gonna be making sure we get misted, making sure that the water is clean, and making sure that, uh, that the lights go on and off to provide the proper photo period. But other than that, it's, gonna, it's fully self-cleaning, self-maintaining, and I expect these guys to thrive. So I'm going to take a look at them here, and as you can see, the female is very mad. She's like, what are you doing to me? And the male is also very, oh, I know, I'm so sorry, I, I'm the devil. Here, here, there you go, go. She's like, I have nothing to say to you. Look at those colors, the black and the purple, it's like a... Nature was really excited when they made these guys. Here you go. There you go. Go on. They're like, dude, what are you doing to me? I don't trust you. I love it. I think they're going to be a lot happier in here. I think that it's going to give them the necessary space that they need, as well as, you know, give my girl a little bit more of the ability to comfortably lay her eggs and not be bogged down by only five inches of substrate that's currently in the back of the 24 by 18 by 24. The only reason I didn't use that substrate over there is just because all the plants are pretty much suctioned to it. Um, that's how long this tank has been set up. So I'm really happy with that. And again, guys, my name's Josh Halter. I am the owner and the founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, come to Biodude Houston Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. I really hope you guys enjoyed the carpet chameleon up upgrade due to Bides. <laughs>